Welcome to another Screenfish one-on-one. I am so excited to hear uh, here today to be speaking with Shope Aluko, uh, one of the stars of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, Shope, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I really, truly appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I had the opportunity to see the film the other day, and I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking with you. It is beautiful. Um, I, I, you know, this is one of those films, this, one of these projects that as it was coming up, I honestly was kind of dreading, Yes, I'm sure as, as I'm sure as you were as well, but it, it, it would be such a difficult project to make. Yes. Yes, it was. Um, that feeling, that sense of knowing that someone's not present, that being Chadwick mm. was really felt on the first day and continued all the other days. Um, you know, we had our call sheet and you know, he's number one. He still has that number one on the call sheet. So mm -hmm. everybody else fell to two, three, four. So we all kind of understood and it was unspoken. Um, and just that, you know, feeling of, um, that unspoken feeling of wanting to make sure that we did it right in his honor and made it excellent in his honor, which is the way he was in the first film. Um, he was, he literally had the superpower um, I believe the Holy Spirit working mm. as a superpower in him because to think that he was battling stage four cancer and was doing all his stunts and was doing take after take and yet was still so humble and giving of himself to everyone and I mean everyone on set including me uh, is amazing and definitely um, something we should try and, um, and maintain in our industry and just with people in general. It, you know, it came as a shock to uh, to all Marvel fans and, and all of us in general, because I, I didn't even realize he was dealing with that while they while you were shooting uh, yeah. with the, the original film. And uh, and and so his loss, I mean, his loss is tragic across the board. And I know there were many questions of what what to do with the franchise and where, what direction to take it. But it absolutely sticks the landing. It, it walks a very fine line between honoring him and moving forward. Absolutely. And, and I think it also mirrored life in general for us because we've gone through two years of trauma, mm. COVID trauma, and a lot of people have lost family and friends. I know I have, and we're grieving. Um, so there was a collective grieving yeah. that we had to not only in honoring Chadwick, but also coming through from the world that we have been through for the last couple of years. And to me, the word was just hope. There's always mm. hope. It, it just is, you know, you get up and you stand back up and you continue in life and you do the best you can. And I felt that, you know, that film embellished everything, you know, we we had a joke on set that it was called Wakanda forever and ever because there were just so many things like happening like the weather and COVID and injuries and, and all kinds of things were setting back but you know it prevailed it yeah. came out and I think Ryan did a wonderful job with you know having to uh create that theme of hope and and loss and grief and how we come out of it and how we um, we lay it to rest, but also we need to continue with life. And, you know, you bring up Ryan uh, Ryan Coogler, the writer director, and he, I mean, he, every project he's involved in is fantastic, um, and he's one of the I, well, I guess there are because there's so many. There's a number of people that have done it, but one of the few. Marvel directors that that people turn to, you know, say, okay, well, what can we what can we get him to do next? Because he does such an excellent job. From from your experience working with him, I'm just wondering what is what does Ryan bring to a script and to a film? Um, I think he brings heart. Mm. If you look at all the other Marvel films, uh, Black Panther stands out in its own because it's really about it's about heart. It's about how people are feeling. I mean, definitely we have all the big scenes, the fight scenes and all that stuff, but I think the running theme is really the heart of it, mm. the heart of Wakanda, the heart of these people who um, have hidden themselves from the entire world for a reason. And now, you know, they're exposed and they are under attack. So, you know, that's the thing that he brings to the scripts. 
And, you know, he wrote, we wrote that script a few times, you know, um, not just from the first time before we lost Chadwick, but thereafter, mm. because he understood that it was a huge mantle for him to just, you know, get back into that, you know, mind frame. And I'm sure he probably had those conversations with himself, like, how can I stay true to what I feel um, and how we could bring these characters to life? And I think he did a wonderful job. He really did. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, and now this, you stepping back into the role of shaman uh, the second time. Um, and did I, did I read correctly? You had to learn, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to even pronounce the name of the language. <laughs> Is it? I had it, to learn Kosa. Kosa. Um, literally, yes. It's a South African language from a specific tribe. I had, um, I knew I would be, you know, you've seen it already. So, you know, spoilers, I was going to be presiding over to um, funerals and mm -hmm. I didn't have my lines yet. And it was because, you know, the dialect coach wasn't here yet from South Africa uh, due some, to some visa issues. So I was just like, <laughs> you know, how am I gonna get through it? And then I knew I had five days and he landed and I had literally two huge paragraphs, um, wow. pretty much two pages to learn uh, in a language that I, I, you know, so many clicks and so many nuances. But, you know, I just literally um, prayed on it and I just said, God, you, you know how my heart is. I want to do well by my people, um, the African diaspora, and I want to do well um, by Ryan and definitely the rest of the team at Marvel and Disney. And I did it. I literally did it. And it was amazing. I absolutely give myself a pat on the back. You know, um, not all of it made it into the final cut, but you know what? Mm -hmm. I did it, uh, and I'm so glad I did. That's amazing. That is, uh, I mean, five days to have to pull that together is unbelievable. Um, yeah, what a challenge. Absolutely. I, well, and the, one of the things about this film, you know, we talk about um, it, for although it's a superhero film, you get the sense that they're really seeking to represent culture authentically. And I'm just wondering, from your experiences on set, what sets these films apart from from the average? I'm not saying films are average, but I mean the average Marvel Marvel set. I think it's with um, everybody that comes with a charge of excellence. We mm. have everything from the music, Ludwig Jorgensen, who went and did his research um, and traveled to Africa and learned different types of instruments and musics. Um, so you will see that as well as um, to as you've seen the film, the Mayan, the, you know, that originality. So, you know, he brings that excellence in himself, in addition to Ryan, of, of course, you know, doing his research. And then you have Ruth Carter, you know, award-winning uh, Ruth Carter, who also does an incredible amount of research. I mean, she's so amazing and she's so humble and sweet. Um, and, you know, you just have everybody on there that does the work, they put in the work. And that's why you see it and, you, and everybody has a nod to it. You know, people from those countries will go, oh yes, they got it right. They really did get it right. And I think that was the importance of, you know, having all of us come together to make sure we honored every country and, and every heritage properly. Yeah, it, uh, there's, there's something so special about this franchise that, that it sets it apart from so many of the other of the other entries into the, the Marvel truly universe now because it's everywhere. Um, it, it's just unbelievable and it's stunning to see. Um, it, really it really is. And it honors the African diaspora, which mm. was something that I put on my vision board years ago. Mm. You know, I'm an actor and I wanted to work on a project that honored my heritage. Um, and I never even thought that God could build a bigger dream because soon after I made that, you know, um, vision on my board, he, Black Panther came and I started to audition for it. And I was like five times, five auditions, five different roles later. I was like, is this really, is this going to happen? And it finally happened. And just being part of history, you know, I have a son who's, I have a son in college, he's a sophomore, but I also have a son who is about to go to college, he's a senior. And he told me in his SAT, there was a question on Black Panther. And that, wow. blew, yeah, that, that blew me away. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, mom, that's how big it is. I mean, yes, we know how big it is. We know how about everybody loving Black Panther and all the kids around the world and them seeing themselves in this film. 
it just gives you a moment to see how much it's impacted the entire world. It really has. And, and to be a part of that is just amazing. And I'm so, so grateful. I'm grateful every day to be part of this movie franchise. Well, it, it's such a unique franchise in that it, it has, it still has the spectacle. Like there's some wonderful spectacle in this. That scene, the, the battle of Wakanda, the battle for Wakanda is stunning. stunning stunning to, to to watch um just it, it's just incredible and even the underwater scenes are just it's grand but yeah. there's the there's kingdom, such a the palacanel is under the, the underwater uh, water scene it's phenomenal um i mean just everything is done so so well um it took my breath away mm. and 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 it, that's what it is you have your tissues you're laughing one minute then you're crying then you're laughing again and then you're like oh. It's kind of yeah. like a sensory overload because you're like going through all of these things and then you're left with a piece of art at the end of it. And I love that idea that, you know, it's a legacy that continues. Um, mm. in, 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 in it, it's, it's not about one person. It's just about the legacy of, of what a world we could be if we could all get along, you know, mm. hopefully. And, you know, that's that. I hope it, you see that in the film. Absolutely. And, and there's 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 a genuine soul to the characters in the in these films as well. Like there's, I mean, in the first film we see, uh, I mean, in the second film, without saying too much, you see some of it too. But in the in the first film, there's 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 the the grand, you know, a real spirituality about the people and about this about the culture, the Wakandan culture, and and that's the case here as well. Um, and that that makes it so different uh, to me. It does. It does. There are unexplainable moments that I had at the first where we felt very spiritual with the drums. You know, mm. I've talked about this many times when we had all the extras and we're standing there in between sets and all of a sudden everybody's singing and drumming. And, 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 and to me, that is just something that was just, you know, an essence of how we had no idea what we were working on, but we knew it was bigger than ourselves. Mm. Um, so, you know, we had, and we also had that spirit again, when we, when we go through the procession, um, mm. which you see, um, and it's a celebration of life and you could see one minute we we're crying. I mean, I, I, I got very emotional many times I had to cut, I, I couldn't get through it because it sent, it, it, it didn't feel like I was acting anymore. Mm. <laughs> I was literally feeling the loss and, you know, because I, other than a memorial for, for Chadwick, we hadn't you know, gone to his funeral. Um, I mm. hadn't gone to his funeral. And so I had to take it back for a couple of times and think, okay, this is this is something I have to, you know, manage. And um, and all my cast members would come and just stroke my back and we were all crying and, you know, would get through it. Um, and that's the beauty of watch, on, on working on, on a set like this is that we all felt like a family. Mm. You know? because yeah and so it was nice when I came back again and I just was hugging everybody and like oh we're back it's four years later and here we are you know we're kind of like you, you know but everybody from makeup hair it was just an awesome feeling of feeling loved and feeling that protected and knowing that we all got each other no matter what may you know well and I'm glad you said that because one of the key themes about this film obviously in some ways is grief and loss um so I was just wondering from, from your opinion, your experience, and, and even on set, do, do you think we ever truly recover from loss? And if so, what does that look like? Um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how to answer that because mm. I have to say that, first of all, I am an actor because I lost both of my parents mm. uh, back to back and they never got to see me act. I was in corporate America for many years, you know, my story. Mm. Um, and, you know, whenever anybody loses their parents or anybody loved ones, there's a process of grief that is inexplainable. You go from, um, you know, pain, anger, um, guilt, and then you go back to guilt and then you think you're doing better and then you keep on going back. There's not, there's not, it's not pretty. Mm. Grief is not pretty. But what I think we should take away from this is that we still get up. You've yeah. got to get up the next day you got to take the next step and every day you hope you'll be a better person and um, 
you hope that you are sheltered and governed by the fact that you have somebody most high in control of everything. Um, so hopefully that comes across in the film, you know, you know, grief is not pretty, it's not great. It's like, it's horrible, it's tear jerking, it's everything. But the idea that you do have hope, there is a hope, even though you don't see it right then, there is a hope that does come. And, you know, it sounds corny, but the sun does shine the, the next day. Um, and more importantly, we're all here for those who are suffering in grief and loss to support each other. Mm. You know, I try to do that for a lot of my friends who are just going through the loss of their parents. Um, and from what I've learned, I just, you know, use and help them through it. So hopefully this film does the same as well. It, it, it has those moments for them. Yeah, absolutely. There's, this is a, it, this is a film that I feel really is is beautifully written. Um, for people that want the action, they're going to get it. It has the, you know, all the things that you want Wakanda to bring. Um, but that's that's not what makes it so good. Um, it's it's that it really does send a message. And I, I mean, I'm just looking up Marvel in general. And one of the things I've I've seen since Endgame, a lot of the films have dealt with themes of, of trauma and grief and struggling to get by. And, and this film, I felt, even as it ends the phase, uh, does so, so beautifully. Um, it truly is, it truly is a, a special one. It really does. And, and, you know, with grief, you know, you go through it, you know, and I, and I read something about Ryan, you know, he obviously put everything into this. Mm. Um, and his last few years have just been trying to get this done. And sometimes we pause grief to get through what we've got to do. Mm. Then it hits. It's in those quiet moments when everybody's gone and left the funeral and you're home and you're clearing up. You know, you've been planning the funeral and everything, you're home and clearing up. It's in those after moments that you really, you really have to lean on your faith and hope that, you know, things will be better. And I think, you know, and I, and I pray that for Ryan because I know that he hasn't had a chance to properly grieve. Mm you know, Chadwick, because I know he had a very wonderful relationship. We had an incredible memorial for him. And, and thank, thankfully, Lupita and Janai had um, planned it for all of us cast members um, to have a memorial for Chadwick. It was planned for maybe an hour or two. And we were there for over three hours. Wow. It, wow. it, it was just, and I was crying. It was messy. We were in shock and grief and loss and pain. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I just, I'm so glad that I just got the honor to be involved in such a film and to have known him, um, and, and have experienced him and uh, it is just wonderful. Uh, I, I, you know what, it, it feels like such a personal project and I can see that it, it truly is to you. Uh, Chope, thank you so much for the time to chat with you. You're wonderful um for a small independent film like this uh no <laughs> no honestly you're wonderful and uh i wish you the best uh with with this film and, and your future projects i i just so excited for you thank you so much thank you so much and please watch out for next year i do have a a short film coming out the first of my production company oh wow yes it's um it's called chidera it's based on um true facts from my nigerian heritage Okay. And I have to say, um, I have to give it to Michaela Cole, who I worked with on set and her bravery and being able to do what she did kind of, she was one of the people who inspired me to do this. So mm. watch out for it next year. I'm very, very excited for you to see it. Absolutely. We'll keep an eye out for that. Thank you yeah. so much. Wakanda, uh, <laughs> Wakanda forever. forever. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shopee. Have a great day. And you too. Bye. Bye-bye.